And welcome to another episode of Pizza Class. Today we're going to be talking about making thin crust pizza. You'll find this type of pizza in all kinds of different restaurants, but it gained some popularity in Chicago, believe it or not, where deep dish pizza is the most famous thing, but locals tend to prefer thin crust pizza a lot of the time. We're going to learn how to make a really delicious thin crust pizza today. Now the trick to a thin crust pizza is reducing the amount of water so that we have a crackery crust that's not as chewy as we're used to for traditional style pizza. So we're going to use a low water percentage and I'll show you what we're going to do with this pizza by first talking about equipment and ingredients. Let's take a look at the dough ingredients for this recipe. I have them here on my table. First we have 484 grams of a high gluten flour. This is the same flour we use in our traditional recipe. We've got 237 grams of warm water. We've got 10 grams of salt, 6 grams of sugar, and about 5 grams of olive oil. It's not much olive oil at all. And we have just under a teaspoon of active dry yeast. This pizza doesn't require a lot of yeast and it's hard to measure such a small amount by weight with a single batch of dough like this. So we're just going to say use just about, uh, it's about a gram, a gram and a half. So it's just under a teaspoon. It's easier to measure that way. We'll begin the process of preparing this dough by taking our yeast and, and pouring it into our water. Since it's active dry yeast and not instant dry yeast, that gives the yeast a chance to activate. You can also go ahead and just add the sugar to the water. And we'll just give that a stir. Get that to dissolve a bit. We'll let that dissolve and we'll set that aside for a couple of minutes. And our next step will be to add the flour straight into the bowl. We can go ahead and add our salt. And now we can add our yeast water directly into the bowl. And we're going to hold off on the oil for just a minute. Go ahead and begin to combine those ingredients. And once you see the ingredients combined, you can add in that oil. Continue mixing. Because we didn't add a lot of water, it's going to actually be a little bit difficult for a lot of mixers. You can begin to see the dough ball forming can allow that to mix for four or five minutes until the ingredients are well combined. Now once the ingredients are combined in this thin dough ball, we can stop our mixer, ready to take this out. And basically just make sure that it's formed as a ball it's going to be a little bit harder to work with because we're working with a much stiffer dough. But we can still form a ball from it. And once the dough ball is formed, you can actually just use a plastic bag for this dough. Um, so we'll just go ahead and place that dough directly in into a zip lock bag into a plastic bag, seal that up, and this will go right in the refrigerator for 24 to 48 hours. That will allow this dough to rise a little bit uh, and it will be ready for us to take the next steps. So to get started let's talk about equipment and ingredients. So for equipment, first we need to use a pizza screen for this recipe. That will come in handy for a couple of things. One, to stretch, after we stretch the pizza, it will hold the toppings for us, but we also will have a trick to show you for how to get a really nice round 
thin crust pizza out of, out of this as well. In addition to that, this is the only time I will ever advise anyone to roll pizza dough. Typically, I would say never ever use a dough roller on your pizza dough, but for this pizza, we're gonna use a dough roller to make sure it's nice and thin and evenly spread. Now, when you have a thin crust pizza like that, you often all will also experience uh, big bubbles. So we wanna dock the pizza or poke holes in it before we top it. You can just use a fork, but I also like to use a specialty tool called a docker. You can pick these up online. Uh, they're not very expensive, but they make poking holes in your pizza a little easier. And, and lastly, a small size roller might be handy as well to trim the edge of the pizza with a trick that I'll show you when we get to that point. Now let's talk about ingredients for this pizza. So we're gonna make a cracker style pizza that has pepperoni and sausage on it today. Uh, but I wanna talk to you about some specific ingredients that we use that we wouldn't normally use. For one thing, we have our traditional pizza sauce here. This pizza sauce is just like the ones we use on our other pizzas, but we're gonna do a little bit of a different step with this and add in some of this tomato concentrate. You can buy tomato concentrate in small cans. This is almost an entire can. We're gonna add that to our traditional sauce to thicken it and give it a little bit of extra punch. In addition, we've got pepperoni and sausage here for our toppings and our mozzarella cheese, whole milk that we'll grate ourselves. And then we've got a small bit of uh, partially dried parsley and a bit of fresh basil that I've chopped into small pieces. That'll go on top of the pizza as well. These flavors will work really, really well together, and I especially like them for a thin crust. So let's talk about preparing our dough base. This pizza is as thin as we can get it. So we prepared our pizza dough 24 to 48 hours ago, and we've had it in the refrigerator in this bag, and it's time to take this pizza out. I'm just gonna tear that out, and we've got our pizza dough ball here. Now it's only got 50% water, so it's gonna feel a little more dry than the other pizza dough se sessions that we're used to making. We'll be able to just press this down and begin to roll it. If you use a countertop like this, you don't have to flour it or really be concerned at all with that. When you roll it, roll it from the center out to ensure that it's consistently thin. You can use your hand a bit if you need to just to get it as close as you can to a round pizza. This pizza is a little hard to work with just because it's so dry. Okay, now that's nice and thin, so we're ready to begin to put this pizza on our peel. And this is where I have a little trick. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pizza peel and we're gonna lay it right down on top of this stretch dough. And then we're gonna fold the edges up. And then we're gonna just use the tension of the, there we go. So we've got a nice thin pizza. And this is where we take our small roller. We just roll right around the edge and cut that dough right off. It's okay if it shrinks up a little bit. And you'll also have a little bit of extra dough. That's completely fine as well. But this will get you a really nice round pizza. Set that extra dough aside, and we're ready to begin putting our toppings on. We'll take that, we'll take that tomato concentrate, and we'll stir that into our sauce, just to thicken this sauce up a bit. I like thick sauces on thin pizzas. It gives it a little bit of extra texture. And again, that tomato concentrate is going to add some flavor, a little bit of punch to our sauce. You can be fairly liberal with the sauce on this pizza. It 
and you can go almost right up to the edge because this pizza is not going to have a uh, much of an edge crust. We're going to top it right up to the edge. That's pretty good. We're ready for cheese. This time we're using shredded mozzarella only. Just about a half a block. And like I said, you can go right up to the edge with this. That cheese is going to melt right up against the edge. Next we're going to put our basil around there a bit. And just a bit of parsley as well. Not too much of that. That's and our pepperoni. I'm not going to go edge to edge on this because we have so much meat on this pizza. I think it'll look really nice to leave some space. And finally, some sausage. That's just about a half cup of sausage. I'm not using that whole bowl. And this thin crust pizza is ready to go in the oven. Now we'll bake this at 485 for eight to 10 minutes and our oven's been preheated for well over an hour. Uh, we'll get back in just a few. Thin crust pizza is out of the oven and look at that beautiful looking pizza and you can see that the uh, cheese and toppings have begun to slide off the edge of there and that's just how I like it. Um, nice and thin crackery crust. Should be able to hear the crisp of that thin crust as we cut through there. And you can just see how nice and thin that crust layer is. That's going to be a terrific pizza. So that's it for our thin crust style pizza. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of Pizza Class.